All right, but we begin tonight with more fake news from CNN. This time it is spewing from the lips of the Clinton News Network president. His name is Jeff Zucker. And according to The Hollywood Reporter, Zucker recently blasting Fox News as, quote, a propaganda machine and state-run TV. Now, by the way, Fox News, like every newspaper in the country, they have a sports page, they have a news page, a gossip page, and they have an editorial page. Oh, opinion programming. He even went on to say that this network does, quote, a disservice to the country. Now, this is coming from the man whose so-called cable news station, CNN, is literally nicknamed the Bleep Hole Network because they have an obsession with the word. You might remember this. Is there a difference if the president said, uh, hole or house? Do you think these countries are holes? Donald Trump has turned the Oval Office into a hole. Polars built this country 110 years ago. In addition to the president's whole comments yesterday, uh, a few more. Whole countries. Whole. 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 Whole country. Rich, do you have any example of any whole country that the president referred to that is predominantly Caucasian? Polars. Holes. Polars. I work for polars. Whole. 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 I'm proud to be a polar. I never in a million years thought I would be saying whole on television. Jeff Zucker's bleep hole network. Well, they also have a new obsession, basically soft core pornography from the nonstop coverage of Stormy Daniels to the constant speculation about an alleged affair between Trump and a porn star. If you're looking for 24 seven, never ending, looped around porn related news, CNN fake news, they have you covered. Take a look. This could be the last nail in the coffin. Yeah. Stormy Daniels is causing stormy weather. Porn star Stormy Daniels claims President Trump broke the law, had her bullied. Does Stormy Daniels have the president's number? It sure seems that way. President Trump might have met his match uh, with Stormy Daniels. How is Stormy weathering this? Stormy speaks. We're hearing quite a bit from Stormy Daniels. Stormy, in her own words, isn't going anywhere. Stormy Daniels has a good lawyer. The porn star Stormy Daniels was telling the truth. Stormy Daniels is on a tear. Quick preview of Stormy Daniels' interview this Sunday. Breaking news that Stormy Daniels. 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 The reason he can't engage with Stormy Daniels is because she's got his number. It's about an alleged affair, not proven, and of course, very different from Bill Clinton and Juanita Broderick, Kathleen Willey, and of course, Paula Jones. But CNN's obsessive 24 7 coverage doesn't end with Stormy Daniels. They're also now giving a former Playboy playmate, Karen McDougal. They're giving her plenty of airtime. And again, we're talking about potentially alleged consensual relationships, and we're going to compare how they covered, oh, assaults and exposing oneself and even rape with Bill Clinton. All this effort, of course, in this case, to destroy Donald Trump. Take a look. So when was the next communication? I believe we talked right away on the phone, and I think we talked for about a week on the phone before his next visit to L.A., and that was his birthday, which I think is June 12th. Would he, would he call you? He would call me. I would call him, vice versa. Uh, CNN's new obsession. And we might have a brand new name for their leader, their, their chief, their CEO, Jeff Zucker, the porn king of cable news. And of course, porn king Jeff Zucker and his colleagues over at the Bleep Hole Network, they are not alone in their stormy obsession. NBC, ABC, CBS, and others also featuring saturated coverage of this story. Now, predictably, the same level of media interest was not present back in the early 1990s when then-President Bill Clinton was accused of having multiple extramarital affairs and even worse, engaging in serious instances of sexual misconduct. By the way, in the case of Jennifer Flowers, uh, she was proven right, but I remember James Carville, oh, he worked and he was one of the people talking about it or dragging a dollar through a trailer park about Paula Jones. Remember Paula Jones? She accused Bill Clinton of literally pulling down his pants and exposing himself. And according to the Media Research Center, in the first three days of that scandal, ABC provided a whopping 16 seconds of coverage. NBC, CBS, they ignored it. And next, there's the case of Kathleen Willey. And she said that Bill Clinton groped, grabbed, fondled, touched, kissed her against her will inside the Oval Office. That story breaks. How's your fake news handle it? ABC ignores it. NBC, CBS gave it a whopping 34 seconds of coverage, again, according to the Media Research Center. CNN, meanwhile, they dedicated 26 seconds of coverage during their evening newscast. 
Then, of course, you have the serious allegation of rape. Juanita Broderick, and I interviewed Juanita Broderick, one of the toughest interviews I ever did. This surfaced first in 1998. The Media Research Center tells us ABC, CBS totally ignored the breaking story. NBC aired seven minutes of coverage, but not before initially spiking its pre-taped interview with Juanita Broderick. Now, this proves what I have been saying about journalism since, what, 2007 or 8? It's dead and buried in this country. We'll have more on this later in the show. Also tonight, John Dow, the lead lawyer for President Trump's legal team for dealing with Robert Mueller's witch hunt, has resigned. And just a few hours ago, Fox has confirmed that Victoria Tunsing will be joining the president's legal team. And President Trump is also breaking news tonight, saying that he would like to do a sit-down with the special counsel. Let's delve into this. Thank you very much. I'm sure the president would, and my advice to the president, you got to be very careful. I've been warning everybody about Robert Mueller and his merry band of Democratic donors. We know for a fact Robert Mueller is conducting a biased, partisan, totally flawed investigation. He has gone way beyond his mandate. Mueller's original purpose. It was supposed to be about finding evidence of Trump-Russia collusion, but we haven't found it in over a year, almost a year and a half now. Now, that's why he was appointed. It is not what he is doing. As constitutional law expert and liberal Democrat, Professor, Professor Alan Dershowitz of Harvard, he is pointing out the special counsel, counsels exist to bring about charges, justify their existence. doesn't matter if it is at all connected to what they're supposed to be investigating. They have to do all of this to justify their existence at an enormous cost, not only to the American taxpayers, all of you, but also to the culture and society. Now, this Mueller witch hunt has been going on for over a year, and so far he's found nothing regarding Trump-Russia collusion. And the president, by the way, has every reason to be upset, and here's why. Mueller's team has more Democratic donors than a liberal Hollywood fundraiser, and not one of Mueller's partisan witch hunters donated to Trump. Every single Republican in Washington not named Donald Trump would crack under this kind of pressure. So, yes, completely understandable when you appoint a team that donates to Obama, the DNC, Hillary Clinton, and they're all going after one guy and not one person that donated to Trump. Well, of course, the president wants to fight back because the special counsel from day one has been abusively biased. And many on that team have questionable ethics. They have horrific backgrounds and they're out to destroy him. By the way, saying I'm not guilty, that's how any innocent person would act. Now, Rod Rosenstein, he has stacked the deck against President Trump by appointing his buddy, Robert Mueller, and he has conflicts himself. And then James Comey admitted he leaked the memos to get the special counsel appointed, and of course, it happened. This is one big, giant, incestuous, deep state cabal that is trying to unseat a duly elected president. All right, we'll have more on that. Now, also breaking this hour, H.R. McMasters has resigned as the national security advisor, and he will be replaced by John Bolton. This is a huge improvement. We'll have more on that. And tonight, the House Judiciary Chairman Bob Goodlatte has issued a subpoena to the DOJ demanding documents on this fixed Clinton email investigation, which never was an investigation, also about severe FISA abuse and on Andrew McCabe's firing. And Chairman Goodlatte, he notes in a press release, and this is something we have been reporting on, Congress has now requested 1.2 million DOJ FBI documents related to the Clinton investigation. The inspector general has them. Why won't they turn them over? The Hill's reporting that Chairman Goodlatte is trying to determine whether or not Comey lied under oath. He's requesting those documents as well. And so far, Congress has only received of the 1.2 million 3,000. Well, that sounds like obstruction. That doesn't sound like the wheels of justice or equal justice under the law. The DOJ is stonewalling. They're preventing Congress from conducting their constitutional job, which is oversight. Remember, Rod Rosenstein sucking up to Paul Ryan in the final hours. Please don't let Congress have access to the truth about FISA abuses. And we all know the Clinton email investigation was a sham because Comey struck Lisa Page, McCabe, and probably Loretta Lynch, all part of putting the fix in. And on FISA abuses, the memos have exposed that the FBI and DOJ used what? Unverified 
because they're not true. Clinton bought and paid for dossier, Russian lies, to get a FISA judge to get a warrant to spy on Carter Page, Trump associate, which then allows them to spy on the entire Trump campaign. And we know the bulk of the FISA application, according to the Grassley-Graham memo, was made up of the phony Clinton dossier full of Russia and Russian government lies and propaganda. And as Andrew McCabe testified, without no dossier, it never would have even been a FISA warrant application. And as for McCabe, his comments after being fired, well, could put his buddy James Comey in serious legal jeopardy. Remember, in a statement, McCabe writes in part, the OIG investigation is focused on information I chose to share with a reporter through my public affairs officer and a legal counselor. As deputy director, I was one of only a few people who had the authority to do that. And it was not a secret. It took place over several days. And others, including the director, were aware of the interaction with the reporter. By the way, he's not addressing lying under oath. So according to McCabe, Comey knew he was leaking information to the media, which is in part why McCabe got fired and then lying under oath also contributed. What McCabe is saying now is very different from what James Comey said back in May of 2017. Who do you believe, Comey or McCabe? We'll let you decide. Director Comey, have you ever been an anonymous source in news reports about matters relating to the Trump investigation or the Clinton investigation? Never. Uh, question two on relatively uh, related. Have you ever authorized someone else at the FBI to be an anonymous source in news reports about the Trump investigation or the Clinton investigation? No. Now, you got to wonder if Georgie Stephanopoulos over at ABC, Clinton's BFF, and the liberals on The View, and Stephen Colbert, and F fake Jake over at CNN Fake News, and Rachel Maddow, you think they're going to ask Mr. Deep State James Comey about any of this? We're not going to hold our breath. But James Comey's welcome on the show. Our invitation continues. Now, what is becoming more apparent by the day is how the deep state is fighting back as they continue to get exposed. They're not liking what is now happening and what we are exposing on the show. The perfect example is former Obama CIA director John Brennan. He is now trying to malign President Trump with a brand new conspiracy theory. Let's take a look. I think he's afraid of the president of Russia. Why? Um, well, I think one can speculate as to why, uh, that the Russians may have something on him personally, uh, that they could always roll out and make his life more difficult. Uh, clearly, I think it's important for us to be able to improve relations with Russia. But the fact that he has, has had this fawning attitude toward Mr. Putin has not said anything negative about him. Uh, I think continues to you know, say to me that he does have something to fear. Great. Now, he's a known liar, but the media just parrots Brennan's talking points. Let's look at this. A former CIA director who's worked for presidents on both sides of the aisle is deeply concerned. It's so clear at this point that Vladimir Putin and his associates, somebody has something on Donald Trump. The big question we're asking today, why does this president feel the way he does about Vladimir Putin? That may be something that turns the key in the Russia probe, is figuring out why this president is so deferential to Putin and to Russia, and if there is some sort of compromise that they have on him. President Trump has been 50 times harder on Russia than Obama ever was. And he's about to take the legs out of Vladimir Putin's economy. And he's not whispering, oh, tell Vladimir after the election, I'll have more flexibility. Brennan is also threatening President Trump. Let's take a look at his tweet. When the full extent of your venality, moral turpitude, and political corruption becomes known, you will take your place as a disgraced demagogue in the dustbin of history. You may scapegoat Andy McCabe, but you will not destroy America. America will triumph over you. Okay, John Brennan, who voted for a communist for president, a deep state swamp rat who's losing his mind and all of his friends now are being exposed. Here's a little Hannity history lesson on Brennan that the media won't tell you. As I said, he admitted to voting for, quote, a communist party candidate. Uh, how did you ever become the CIA director? You have to wonder. 
And maybe Robert Mueller should see if he's ever colluded with the Russians. And that's not all. The New York Post has reported that the House Intel Committee is investigating John Brennan and his ties to the Clinton bought and paid for dossier. And the same committee is now looking into whether Brennan committed perjury when he testified under oath, like his buddy McCabe, because he claimed to have no idea who paid for that dossier. And the Post also reporting that John Brennan briefed members of Congress, including former Democratic Senator Harry Reid, about that phony dossier. And if you remember, Reid then put out a statement after meeting with Brennan days after or before the election and referenced the dossier because Brennan told him. So Brennan is dirty, political and corrupt as they come. And now he's lashing out because we're all finding out who he really is. We have even more breaking news to tell you about. The House Intel Committee has put an end to this Russia investigation, 14 months, and they will ha had a vote to release the public to the public the Republican members' final report. And the House Intel Committee released a summary of the key findings today. Here are the highlights. After 14 months, interviews with over all these witnesses, the committee found no evidence of Trump-Russia collusion. One, so the liberal media, all you Democrats, have been lying to the American people. James Clapper, number two, former Obama director national intelligence oh fake news cnn contributor well he provided inconsistent testimony about his contacts with the media i guess comey's going to get hired next and then brennan and who knows maybe they'll hire stormy and by the way if members of the partisan press are watching we first reported this last week it's called investigative journalism real news you guys might want to try it sometime instead of spinning these woo -woo 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 conspiracy theories and by the way, this wouldn't be the first time Clapper has lied to Congress. Back in May of 2013, let's watch Clapper lie. Take a look. Does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? No, sir. It does not. Not wittingly. There are cases where they could in inadvertently perhaps uh, collect but not, not wittingly. Oh, Clapper was lying through his teeth right there. Well, that seems to be the standard operating procedure for all these Obama deep state actors. All right, point three. The committee found, House Intel Committee, zero evidence of President Trump's pre-campaign business dealings resulting in any kind of collusion. Point four, they conclude, no evidence that Trump associates were involved with WikiLeaks publishing stolen Democratic emails. This is another liberal media fantasy that's getting shot down. By the way, with all the countries that hacked into Hillary's server, who knows who got those, Wiki who gave it to WikiLeaks? There's one of a dozen choices. Here's my prediction. Pretty easy to get this run right. The rest of the liberal media is not going to report this tonight because it proves them to be liars and phony in their quest for journalism and truth. This is all a disinformation campaign, and it's gone on way too long. Finally tonight, I know I'm going long, Sarah Carter, brand new news reporting, headline Robert Mueller, Andrew Weissman, the FBI and the mob. Sarah detailing how both Mueller and Weissman are directly involved in two of the biggest scandals in FBI history. When Mueller was an acting U.S. attorney in Boston in the 80s, well, he was involved in the FBI's corrupt, highly unethical relationship with the infamous murderer, mobster Whitey Bulger. Four men ended up being framed for murder, sent to jail. Two of them died in jail. Then it resulted in over $100 million in damages to the two that lived. And then there's Mueller's pit bull, Andrew Weissman. The rotten ap apple doesn't fall very far from the tree. He's the guy in a 1990s organized crime case. Weissman was reprimanded by a judge for withholding exculpatory evidence. And his powerful friend, well, later were out there to get him out of trouble. We also told you about Weissman's hard-charging tactics. In the Enron case, tens of thousands of people lost their jobs at Anderson, Anderson Accounting. Four Merrill executives go to jail. That case was overturned, 9-0 against him. All of this information is shocking. That's Mueller's team. But given what we know about Mueller and his pit bull, Weissman, well, it's now par for the course. This is a national disgrace what's happening.